welcome to our global self-awakening workshop. I'm very excited that we're, we're together here. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. This is day six. It's our last day. It's been definitely a pleasure and honor to be with you and um, getting so much love and feedback from all of you across the world and connecting in this way. I um, do plan on doing this again. Uh, I don't know when, but this was more of a test run and I wanted to offer something to my brother sisters from across the world. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity to do it. Uh, we wanted to learn a lot of things here as far as how to operate this, how to broadcast. And uh, we learned a lot as far as we uh, did some uh, troubleshooting with our equipments, with the time of the day, um, and also getting a feel like, okay, how many days in a row can I do this? Um, how should it be done? There's a lot of things that you have to figure out. So now we have a very good idea how to do this. Um, I'm excited. Uh, if there's a second wave of the pandemic in September, October, and we're all going to be, if, if that happens and we're forced to be inside, then I have a very good idea how I can broadcast next time and how many days, how many hours uh, our uh, workshop should be and it's possible to do it. As normal, always, um, let's slowly uh, sink inside. Let's do a short meditation uh, to give us a chance to arrive, to get us a chance to incorporate into this energy. The melting into this energy, melting into a higher consciousness also requires a level of attendance to be attentive and to emerge into this awareness, this consciousness. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself a chance because you are a spiritual warrior. You are learning how to shift into dimensions and going from one dimension to another dimension. I will explain this a little bit more later on. This, you may also look at it like you're learning to sail. You're learning to ride a bicycle. You're learning to drive a car. You are learning, you bought a brand new computer and you're learning how to work it. Um, it takes time to adjust into it. It takes time to get skilled with it and to shift from one place to another place, to bring your attention from the other world to inner world and shifting it to the other world. So it takes some skills. None of these things are just one way. None of these things are set in one certain 100% cemented way that it has to be this way. Everything is shifting all the time. So you learn to be a sh shape shifter. You have done this most of your life. You may have not paid attention to it. So flexibility is very important when you're on spiritual path, open heart, open mind, availability, being attentive and being focused. All of these things are the ingredients and also having the desire for freedom, having a desire to arrive 
at the final destination, as well as enjoying the ride, learning how to be a part of this process. As your focus to arrive home, the journey itself is also very important. It's got a lot of ups and downs, a lot of turns, but it's definitely worth it. And it can be very, very interesting because you're diving within your own consciousness and you're discovering things that you didn't know exist. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's slowly dive within in a very simple way, we shift our attention from the outer world to inner world. It's just a shift of attention. Rather than putting my attention on the other world, I put my attention on the inner world. Put it, let's put it this way. Let's say there's an ambulance driving nearby your place and you're hearing the sirens or a fire truck and your attention is on the noise. So your attention is on the noise. Now you take your attention off of that. <clears throat> Same thing here. When you hear your thinking mind, it's very busy, a lot of thoughts coming through, and your attention is on it. You're paying attention to your thoughts. Now you take your attention away from your thoughts. You're not trying to stop your thoughts. You're simply teaching yourself through a systematical way called meditation to discipline yourself to take your attention off of the noise, inner noise. You cannot stop the inner noise, but you can become indifferent to it. You cannot stop how you feel and what you feel but you can become indifferent to it. That's something you can do. So go ahead, turn your attention inwards. Follow your thoughts to where they come from, the origin of your thoughts. Where do they come from? Go all the way to where they come from and bring your attention to that place where thoughts come from. And to your surprise, you may discover that there is no thoughts. It's quiet. It's silent.
Simply exercise your natural rights, your birthright. State of here and now. Hang out in here and now. For being yourself, you don't have to do anything. What do you have to do to be yourself? It's the most natural way of being to be yourself. Completely free. Simply being yourself. Simple, easy, no effort. No struggles. Simply being yourself. Here. Spending time here. Since you cannot be anywhere else. Since there is nowhere else except here. Here is the only thing that there is.
hanging out here with yourself. And in this interaction of simply being here by yourself, you may discover the most important thing in your life. You may discover the gem, the diamond, the wealth of existence is here inside yourself. You may discover that God is here in you, nowhere else, and you are that. And you actually don't need to go anywhere and do anything. You don't have to struggle, try hard, give things up in your life, or gain things to know that what you're looking for is already inside you. You already have it. But you were never looking within. You were always looking for it somewhere else. You're always looking for it in somebody else but not inside yourself. Because your mind is always taking you someplace else. as you're hanging out by yourself. Here, now, without an agenda, without trying to meditate, without trying to get to God, without trying to become a healer, channeler, to become anything, you're just spending time by yourself aimlessly suspended in the air without a purpose. You have no agendas. You're only exercising your natural state being, being here. And in that, suddenly, you discover the magic. You discover that there is a force of life. There is a power beyond your imagination. And this power was hidden within you. A force field gets activated. 
you begin to feel the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. Music, breathe. You feel a level of bliss. You feel love. You feel warm. And you feel protected. You discover yourself that you are completely connected. You can explain this. You can touch it. But you just know that you have become a part of a unified field of oneness, love. Your worries, your problems disappears. And joy, balance, equilibrium replaces that. Time stops and you dive into the eternal now. Your mind goes into silence. And silence becomes your best friend. Just stay in this place. Don't force anything. Let meditation come to you. Let love come to you. Let peace come to you. Don't try to make anything happen. The less you try, the better it is. Just be yourself. And let this energy take over. Don't interfere. You don't need to do a mantra. You don't have to do any visualization. You don't have to use any techniques. You just hang out with this energy. Just be with this. Let this reveal itself to you. Let it take over. Don't interfere. Just hang out. Stop. Drop everything. Stop. And be here. and kind of melt into it as if you're sitting on a very nice comfortable mushy couch and you're lying down and you're sitting on it and you're settling into it it's very comfortable you don't need to do anything this is the same way same thing you're settling in yourself.
settling in yourself. And now you can come back slowly, slowly. Shift your attention from the inner world to the outer world. So from within your attention comes to outer world. And when you get into doing this, pay attention to the language. Let's say you create a language for yourself. And the language is that I'm going to bring my attention from the other world to inner world. And when I say other world, that includes thoughts and emotions. So you're saying to yourself, I'm going to bring my attention from, rather than putting it on my thoughts or my emotions or on the world, the news, the events, family, your affairs, your kids, I'm gonna disconnect from that and I'm gonna bring my attention inwards. So, you say this to yourself and you consciously get in the rhythm of doing it. Yes, it's meditation. You may say to yourself, I'm going to meditate. But then you may have a hard time doing it. So you change the language consciously and you say okay i'm going to take my attention off of the outer world and i'm going to bring the attention to inner world i'm going to bring my attention to the self so do you see the difference can you feel it there's a quality in that that your consciousness consciously acknowledging that you are taking your attention attention rather than keeping your attention on the world's affairs or your affairs whatever connection you have with the world outside you you are taking that attention off of the that and you're bringing your attention inwards not on your feelings or your thoughts, okay? Those are outside of you. You're bringing your attention to the source, to one-pointedness, one point within yourself, that which is not changing, the observer, the watcher, that which inside you, which is still, the Buddha. You have the Buddha inside you sitting like this or like this. It's always watching. 
it's always aware, it's always still, it's not moving. When I say moving means it's not affected by your emotions. You feel good, you feel bad, you're high, you're low. Something inside you is always aware of how you feel. When you feel high, that level of high feeling good is compared to a point of reference inside you that is not affected. So that's how you measure. You're measuring your level of being high and happy to the point of reference. Then when you're low and you feel bad, you're sad, you're miserable, you're, you're suffering, you're going through issues, then you are measuring that level to the point of reference. Your ups and downs are always being measured to something inside you that doesn't change. That's how you know that you feel good or you feel bad. Otherwise, it would be impossible to know if you feel good or you feel bad you would never know it. You cannot distinguish the differences because you have nothing to measure it against. You have to be able to measure something against. Same as when it snows, the city, the government, the state comes and says, say, oh, it snowed two meters one meter, five feet, 10 feet, okay? So it's snowed two meter to what? That length is being compared to what? You have to have a point of measurement. So it's being compared to the ground because the ground, the floor, the ground is the zero. That's the point of reference. It's zero. So you're measuring from zero, anything above it. Okay, you say two meters of snow. Now, wh what about when they're digging in the ground and they're drilling and they're digging and they say, okay, we had to dig 20 meters to get to the water. 50 meters to get to the water. Okay, so you're measuring this 50 or 20 meter that you dug inside the ground to what? What are you measuring it to? It's the flat ground that is zero. Anything above it, you measure it. Anything under it, you can measure it to this one. But this one stays same. This is zero. Same thing. When they say, okay, the city of Los Angeles, its elevation is sea level. So if you li live by the beach, it's the sea level. But if you drive and go to Big Bear, to the mountains, then let's say it's 3,000 meter, for example. Well, 3,000 meter of elevation in comparison to what? 3,000 meter in comparison to the sea level. So that's how you measure it. You have one, they have a point that is not changing. That's your point of reference. It's not changing. That's the zero point. So anything above it gets compared to this and anything under it gets measured against this, okay? Is that fair enough? Are you with me so far? 
Are you there? Yes? Okay, you're okay. I want to make sure you're I didn't hypnotize you and you didn't go to La La Land. All right. So this is important. Pay attention. If you understand this part of it, that alleviates a lot of suffering. You can tackle suffering if you understand what I'm saying. It makes your life very easy. I'm giving you the tool, the secret, the know-how, how you can free yourself from suffering. The most vicious thing that happens in your life because you suffer. You go up and down, up and down, up and down. So now, let's check this out. When you feel, I feel great, I feel good, I feel wonderful, Zaratustra, wow! Because you are aware of feeling really great because you have this zero point. Something inside you is not changing. Something inside you remains the same. So you're comparing feeling really good in com unconsciously. You're not aware of it. Nobody ever told you you're doing this. This may be the first time someone is telling you ever. Nobody told me that. I had to go through the process for 30 years to figure it out for myself. If they had told me this from early childhood, that would have saved me a lot of sufferings and a lot of ups and downs and a lot of depressions and a lot of sadness and a lot of excessive whatever. But I didn't know this. I didn't know that there is something inside me that is always still same, steady, and does not change. I did not know that. And that we can call it the witness, the observer, the real you. You can call it your higher self. You can call it your soul. You can call it the Atman. Whatever name you like, your fifth dimensional self, your guide, whatever name you fancy. You're welcome to use that word. I don't care what word you use. Whatever works for you, use that word. And I encourage you. Something inside you does not change. It's always same. Then when you don't feel good, let's say you feel sad. Sadness or you feel depressed, so you're down. Basically, in language, we say, I'm up, I'm down. You say, I feel good, I feel bad, correct? That's how we refer to it. I feel good, I feel bad. I'm up, I'm down. So, Tustra, I've been really down. I've been really down the past year. I've been really down. What can I do to, to feel good, to come back? How do you know you're down? Because that level of being down is being compared to the zero point inside you. Okay? Make sense? Does it so far? We're on the same page? Okay. Now, here is what concerns you. So far, it sounds great. Whatever you say, Zarathustra, wonderful. But what is it going to do for me? because that's the most important part. What is it gonna do for you? Everything you're saying sounds great, but so what? How is this gonna help me not to go through these ups and downs? Here we are. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you now. The problem is that no one ever told you you are putting your attention on the wrong thing your society, your parents, your school, your teachers, the government, the church, the army, the media, the Hollywood, everyone is 
and a lot of spir pseudo spiritual courses on spiritual world, they're all emphasizing to put your attention of how you feel. How do you feel about that, sweetheart? How do you feel? What do you think? And right there, you're down in the gutters. You went into the trap. And this is happening over and over again. Because it's all misleading you, not intentionally, because they're not even aware of what they're doing, is they take you back into the ruts. You're going back to the gutter. Forget about how you feel. Bring your attention on that place. Discover the place inside you that there is a place inside you that is beyond how you feel or what you think. That is a place that observes your feeling good and observes your feeling bad. Bring your attention to that place. Keep your attention on that. And you will see that's who you are. You're not the one who feels good or feels bad. You're the one who's aware of feeling good and is aware of feeling bad. But that's not who you are. You're not feeling good. You're not feeling bad. You're the awareness of feeling good and feeling bad. That's a major difference. That's a big game changer. One is having the wrong identity, which you lived your life up to now. All of your life, you thought whatever you feel or whatever you think is defining you. So what do you try to do? You're going to try to feel good all of your life, like everybody else. How do you feel good is by acquiring the object of your desire if i get the woman that i want if i get the woman i want if i get the man that i want i'm going to be very happy if i get my soulmate then i'm going to be very happy so because it's all about how do i feel because i want to feel good everybody wants to feel good if i lose a little bit more weight I'll be very happy. If I was 10 years younger or I get a little bit, get some work on my face and I look better, I'm going to feel really good. People who are into the material world, they love money. They want more homes, more businesses, more gold, more stocks. So if I make, if I turn my 1 million to 5 million, I'll be very happy. So what do we do is we go out there and try to get objects. If I can convince my children to give me more attention, I will be very happy. If I can convince my daughter to bring me my grandkids to me regularly, I will be very happy. So you are putting your attention on an other world to get something to make you high. So you're up, happy. You want to be happy. That's what everybody wants. But the thing is, it doesn't work because it's the wrong approach. You get a little bit happy and then you lose that thing that you got and then you're miserable. So you're yo-yo. Pendulum, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. And as you get older, it gets worse. And you can't get a hang of it. And you're running around doing this, doing that, taking this course, taking that course, doing this practice, doing that practice, banging your head against this wall and that wall. And you're frustrated because it's not getting you anywhere. And you're miserable. I know it because I've done it. Yeah. I've done it probably more than you have. With everything. 
with courses, with gurus, with shamans, with drugs, with alcohol, with sex, with danger, with all kinds of things. Not once or twice, hundreds of times, thousands of times to the extreme. And it never made me happy. Short term, I was happy when I got it. When I get the object of my desire, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm a very easy person to satisfy. Very, very easy. Just give me everything I want. Give me the best of everything and I'm very happy. As long as everybody else do what I want them to do, I'm very happy. I'm very easy to satisfy. But it's not there, my brothers, sisters. So, where is it? It's here. You have to find that point of reference, the zero point that things get compared to it. And bring your attention there. Bring your attention. That's why I spend so much time. I put so much energy. All of my meditations, all of my teachings, all of my training programs. If you're learning to be a healer, if you want going to self-awareness, everything we do always, always is pointed at one thing. Those of you who've been with me, you know that. Or if you go through my previous videos, I always direct you to one place. That place inside you, that doesn't change. That place inside you that sees, observes the change, but it's not changing itself. You hear me saying it always. Look for that which doesn't change inside you. So, if you recognize what I'm saying and you bring your attention inwards and you keep your attention on that place, and that place, we let's use a word for it. Let's say the observer. There's something inside you observing, the knower, the watcher. Something inside you is observing your thoughts, is aware, it's watching, it's hearing your thoughts. And it's very busy, a lot of thoughts, 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 worry, worry, anxiety, thoughts. It's getting compared to this place because this place is not changing. It's very still and is aware of a lot of noise. Then thoughts and worries go away. You get what you want, the danger passes, something happens, things calm down. So now everything is very quiet. How do you know everything is very quiet? because that gets, again, quiet is getting compared to this point. Quiet, peace is getting compared to this point. Now you're able to measure quietness to this point because this point is beyond everything. It's beyond quiet, it's beyond peace, it's beyond everything. That is a place that is always still. It's always silent. Then something happens, you get some good news and you're really happy. Everything's great, you're so happy. You're flying in the sky. Forget about Zarathustra, forget about the courses, forget about self-awakening. I got everything going my way. Who wants these things? When things go your way, who cares? 
It's party time. And you're feeling really great. How do you know you're feeling really great? Same thing. It gets compared to this place. From here, you're observing you're feeling really good. Okay? So instead of putting your attention on how you feel, feel good or feel bad, bring your attention to this place. Put your attention on this place. And then you will see that you're going to live a very balanced life. After a while, you don't have these emotional ups and downs because your attention is not on the spikes. You know, it's like stock market. You're studying stock market and it's got spikes. It ju just stocks go really high, they really go down. They really go up, they really go down. So you keep yourself, you bring your attention to this place and then all of a sudden, everything, you know, if you have mood changes, everything's very, very subtle, very subtle. Your mood starts to become steady. Your ups and downs in life get steady. It's not going to be boring. Okay, you may think, I can hear some of you thinking, oh my God, if that's the case, if I'm not going to be super happy and super sad, life is going to be boring. No, it's not going to be boring. Believe me, it's more exciting than ever before. Because you're going to discover something inside you and you're going to, you're going to come to something that is beyond explanation. I can't explain it. It's joyful. It's amazing to be steady with your emotions. It's to go beyond the good and bad, going beyond the world's affairs and not being really affected by it anymore. You're not numbing yourself. This is not a system to numb yourself. You're very sensitive and you feel everything. Of course you feel things. Of course you're going to feel, if a lot of people are starving, you feel their pain. If people are going through sadness, you feel their pain. If there is fear in the, in the world, in your society, I f you, of course you feel it. You're not going to turn to a stupor. You feel everything. But you don't have these ups and downs anymore. You're living steady. It's quiet inside you. You found the place you were looking for. Peace is here. And in that, what happens is since your attention gets focused on this place, bliss comes because the mind, you're no longer involved with the world of the mind because the world of the mind is chaos and the mind is never here. It always is in the past. You did this wrong, you did that wrong, you're so stupid, you didn't da 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 and you should have been doing this and you should have been doing that if you did this, you would have been that, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like an illness. It's just going like that. So your focus is not anymore on the world of the mind because you're seeing the mind. And you're not bound by the rules of it that is taking the past fears, limitations, and projecting it into the future. Oh, this is going to happen to you. Don't do this. Don't blah, 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 blah. Don't take this course. Don't spend money on this because this is going to happen. Blah, 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 all these things. You're not listening to it anymore because you found that which you were looking for, 
your focus is on this one, the one which is aware, the one that hears things, feels things, but is not involved with what she's feeling or what she's hearing or what is going on in the world, you're not involved with it anymore. And then you're gonna discover the gem, the diamonds of this existence, of this world. You're gonna discover the truth of who you are. You're gonna find something inside you that you had no idea it exists beyond your imagination. A freedom beyond your imagination, beyond, beyond physical limitations, beyond anything, because you discover this part of you which is eternal, it's here, and is not bound by the rules of this planet. It doesn't understand fear or worry or anxiety. It's not afraid of death. It's not afraid of limitation. It's not afraid of anything. It's completely free. And that's when your life starts. And you start to feel the love the presence, you're gonna discover that God is here inside you. The presence, her majesty has been waiting here for all these years to be discovered by you. And through that, you recognize that you are one. There's absolutely never been a separation You've never been separated from anything. And you will discover that there is nobody else outside of yourself. You are actually always looking at yourself. You are in contact with only the self. Everything in this world is yourself. You are dealing with yourself all the time. You're seeing your own self in different forms, different looks, looking good, looking bad, looking dangerous, being kind, being an asshole. You find yourself in everything. And not necessarily in a physical form, you have to be with all these different people or you don't even have to like them. But you recognize they're your own self. And there is no other one. There's only one. And that one is yourself. and you become free. When you recognize that, you may want to share it with other people or you may not care to share it with anyone. You just may just dive into it because there is no one to share it with. Or maybe it's in your destiny to go out there and share it with other people. It doesn't matter. You will see what your destiny dictates to you at that time. But you become free. And that should be the ultimate goal in your life to become free out of this prison, to free yourself. That should be your priority. Everything else in the world should 
be secondary. Number one goal should be freedom, to free yourself. Freedom from suffering by discovering the truth of who you are. Who are you? And then if you're concerned about this planet, you're concerned about this world, then by discovering the truth of who you are and living it, that vibration that is created in you will transform the people around you, will transform your surrounding. Excuse us for a second. The, uh, you may want to come go around instead of reaching out. Our Instagram went out. Yeah, thank you, Amir. Okay, uh, anybody has any questions? Uh, I don't know if our chat box is open or not. Not yet. So we're going to open it up. And you're welcome to either wave at me or we're going to turn the chat box on and then you can write to me and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Uh, there's a gentleman named Hassan Tusi on uh, Facebook. I saw you, Hassan. Uh, I just remember you wrote to me. You sent me an email and I didn't respond back to you. I'm sorry. I I forgot. So, but if you do watch the videos, uh, previous videos, the question you ask me is answered in one of my videos. The six sessions we had, this is the sixth session, Hassan. So go through them and watch the ones you haven't watched and your question is answered there. But thank you very much. You're welcome to write back to me again. If you do, uh, this time I promise I write back to you. But I just realized I forgot answering you back. Everything you're looking for, my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you the truth. And it's coming from the sincerity of my heart. Everything that you're looking for is already inside yourself. I'm going to say that again. Everything in this world that you're looking for you can only find it inside yourself because it's already there. Trust on that one. You already having it. All these other things we're doing, all of this stuff is to send you inwards to help you find it within yourself. And that's your wealth. That's your riches. That's wealth. You're wealthy because you have it within yourself. All we have to do is turn the attention inwards and look inside. And you discover the truth of who you are. You discover your divinity. You discover how beautiful you are, how powerful you are. What a majestic being you actually are. Because God is inside you. And it's vibrating and it's shining brightly. We just don't look inside. We're trained, brainwashed, and conditioned to look for it outside. Oh, it's in some athlete, some football player. 
He has it, you don't have it. It's in a movie star. She has it, you don't have it. It's in a gymnast. Or it's in a spiritual teacher. The spiritual teacher has it and you don't have it. That's not true. It's in you. You're the one who has all the answers. You're the one who has all the wealth. Everything you're looking for is inside yourself. Just bring your attention inwards. Bring your attention inwards. Turn it inside. Look for that place inside you which is not changing and keep your attention on it. Keep your focus on that place. Just stay there. Be patient. Don't look for immediate gratification. Don't look for an experience. Don't look that, oh, if I do this, all of a sudden, I'm going to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Or I'm going to be in the middle of space with Krishna and Buddha. Don't look for those things. Don't look for an experience, an instant gratification. Or if I do this, oh, Zarathustra, I've been doing this, but I don't see anything. Well, what do you mean? Well, my friend did it, and he found herself in a Indian Native American camp and she found herself to be a shaman and blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. That was your friend's experience. But we're not looking for an experience because experience comes and goes. We're looking for freedom. We're looking for ultimate freedom. Ultimate freedom is beyond experience. We're looking for something that is going to be forever. Our natural birthright. Complete freedom. Complete happiness. Complete bliss. Not bliss that comes and goes. Bliss which is here all the time. So if you're looking for that, then you're not looking for an experience. An experience comes and goes. You experience it. It feels great. But then it goes. It's not there. That's not what we want. We want the real thing. I want my soulmate. I want my real soulmate. The one that doesn't leave me when I'm old. The one that doesn't leave me when she finds a younger, handsome, better, uh, newer model of me. The one that doesn't leave me because I'm broke. The one who doesn't leave me because I'm sick. I want the one who's going to be with me forever. I want the real thing. The one that is always going to be here. So, turn your attention inwards. Find her here. And you're going to find love. You're going to see that at any moment in your life that you stop, you stop the madness. You stop running around the chase. You stop, you get quiet, boom, explosion. Love. <sighs> oh my God. Tears starts running down. Love comes and you're just in deep love affair. And it's always with you anywhere. And it's not only if you went on that vacation to Caribbean islands, you're in this beautiful, surreal area and you feel, you know, you're sitting on your armchair by the beach, you have your margarita or strawberry daiquiri and everything, you're watching the sunset and you're feeling good but that's conditional 
I'm talking about you are in the worst traffic jam ever. You're driving your car, you're stuck in the car for three hours, and you're in this really bad traffic jam, and you're completely blissed out. Tears falling down because you feel the love of God in you. And you don't care you're in a traffic jam. You can be there for five hours because you're blissed out. That's what I'm talking about. It's not conditional. It's unconditional. And it's possible. It's possible. You can arrive there. You can do it. But let me clear this. This is not a self-empowerment course that I'm teaching you. Let's not make a mistake here. I'm directing you to your inner self. This is not about teaching you to create a system so you can get the things you want. I'm not teaching that. I'm not teaching you that you can go and manifest all these different things in the world to find a new love and to find more money and da 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 da. I'm not teaching that. I'm teaching you, I'm helping you, I'm guiding you to discover your real lover, the presence of God inside yourself that is always in you. And it's alive, it's vibrant, the pulse is here. And by noticing that part inside you, you're going to live a free life that you feel love every moment in your life constantly. And in that point, you don't care about manifesting things because you discovered love inside you and existence will give you whatever you need. It will be presented to you always. Not whatever you want, whatever you need, existence will serve it to you. Because you discovered Her Majesty within yourself. You know who you are. And you've become a queen. You've become a king. You're no longer a beggar. Trying to manifest this, manifest that, asking universe to give you another car, and that's a beggar. That's a modern beggar. You're a homeless on the street begging people to give you a dollar or two. You're begging. That's a beggar. It's a needy beggar. Begging always for something. We don't want to be beggars. You're a king. You're a queen. Remember who you are. Stop begging. Stop begging by discovering who you are. You never have to beg because existence will serve you. That's a good deal. Okay, I have some uh, messages. Yes, Hassan, thank you. I saw, I read your post. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Okay, questions for Z. <laughs> I understand and experience the observer, the presence, and etc. How to experience this on a more permanent, and stable basis, freedom as you express. Okay, uh, Breda, uh, the way you, you, well, you have to start with the first, first thing first. If you understand the observer and the presence, then bring your attention on the observer and keep your attention there. So now you understand what I say intellectually, but you have to put it to practice. Do this for a month or for a few weeks and then come back 
at my academy or at my workshop, Ascension to Fifth Dimension, or at the academy, which is a free service, and then we talk about it. But practice it first. Intellectually, you're understanding it right now, which is great. But now you need to put it to practice, okay? Another question. All right. Desmond Miles. I really can't believe that you, huh? That's that. This is spam. Oh, okay. All right. So. <laughs> it's interesting that this guy is. You you have nothing to do. <laughs> I feel sorry for you that you have nothing to do to come to our platform and make comments here. You have nothing better to do. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. Or you're really deeply in love with me. I think this guy who comes here and writes these comments, negative stuff, and he's attacking, and he writes these uh, racist comments. I have a feeling that deep inside, he's got, he's in love with me. So you blew your cover, my friend. You're in love with me and you want my attention. So you're trying to get my attention in a negative way. So why don't you come on the platform and talk to me and tell me what you want? And I'll be more than happy to give you my attention. It's funny how people, we all do that, not just him. He's not the only one that we all have done it. If you pay attention in your life, especially when you're a kid, you want your parents' attention and you throw a, f you throw a fit or a tantrum. And you start crying loud for a long time or throwing all your toys around because ultimately you want your parents' attention and love. And this guy, I feel the same way that he wants love, he wants to be heard, he wants attention, and he feels that he has to do it in a negative way because he's not being seen. Nobody sees him. So he has to do something like this in order to be noticed. So, Ultimately, when people do that, you have to realize that basically they want acknowledgement and they want to be loved. And it's lack of love that brings them to this point, to be vulgar and to act this way. So everything always comes back to love. So let's send this guy some love together, all of us, that we're here instead of being angry at him or being hateful because he comes to our platform and he disturbs the platform, let's recognize what he really wants and let's give it to him. Let's give him some love. This one is running out of battery. So let's just come to our heart, sink in here, and for this person who is angry, who looks at the world from darkness, glasses of darkness, he lives in separation, he views things from that angle of fear, worry, anxiety, and he has to keep expressing himself in this way on a little small platform that we have and is desperately trying to get our attention, constantly changing his name, coming on Zoom, showing up here and 
throwing a fit so desperately wanting attention. So let's send him some love and wish him healing and wishing him, wishing that Her Majesty God reveal herself to him and he also gets an opportunity to come to the light. Imagine him and put him in a bubble of love.
slowly come back. Gratitudes from Romania. Namaste. Okay, Stephanie, thank you. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. I'm very happy that we're reaching out to all over the world. The keys to the mysteries, to the mystery is within yourself. You're the one who carries it. At one point in your life, you're going to have to stop, stop the madness, and literally stop, pause, put everything on pause. Like right now, in a way, during the pandemic, right now things have loosened up. But earlier, when the whole thing was really heated up, it was kind of like existence put you on pause and you couldn't do anything. You couldn't socialize, travel, have events, go to parties, gatherings, conferences. And you're forced to stay home and bring your attention inwards or put your attention on the news and go crazy. But when your attention goes inwards and you start to look inside and you go deeper and deeper inside yourself, you begin to recognize and realize that you carry the power. The power is here within you it's already here the key to the mysteries is within yourself now pay attention to this don't let this sentence to just travel through and without really paying any attention to it just listen see what i'm saying the key to the mysteries of existence is within you. Nobody else can give it to you. You have to find it inside yourself because you're the one who carries it. It's ingrained within yourself by Her Majesty. Each and every single human being carries that key inside themselves it's not in egypt it's not in sedona it's not in another land it's not in another planet it's here inside yourself but in order to get to it you have to go beyond the thinking mind you have to bypass the thinking mind. It's a journey from the head to the heart. You sink inside to your heart. It means you become quiet. You practice being quiet. And you sink in. As you sink in, the heart opens. Love begins to flow. And the power of the creator begins to reveal itself from within you. You become the beacon of light. And the mystery begins to reveal itself to you. You begin to understand. I 
and you begin to see how beautiful you are. This is beyond physical appearance. This is a different kind of beauty. This is a light that shines from within your heart. But it's not a mental understanding, it's an intellectual understanding. Because intellectually, when you say this to yourself, then the mind comes and says, oh, bad, look at me, I'm needy, I'm da 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 da, I'm old, I'm sick. That's not it. This is a light that shines through you. You discover it, you recognize it, you sit with it, you settle into it, you relax into it. It takes time for it to reveal itself. You have to be patient and stick to your practice. You can't just jump from this branch to another branch to another branch. That's not going to take you anywhere. Whatever school of spirituality you're gravitated to, stick to it until it's over. When it's over, then you move on. But jumping from one thing to another constantly, okay, I'm gonna be doing some practice on, um, I don't know, New Zealand shamanisms with Maui's and I'm gonna be doing this with Hawaiian, da, 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 and I'm gonna do this American, Native American, and then I'm gonna work with Zarathustra, and then I'm gonna take a course from Tony Robbins. It's cool but it's too much, too many different things to do. So it gets you engaged in the mental activity. What I'm referring to is to disengage yourself from a mental activity, to sink inside yourself by disengaging not getting engaged, disengaging. So you can sink inside yourself. And that's where it gives you the key to unlock the heart. And the heart opens and the love reveals itself. You begin to feel joyful every day. And you get to see the magic of life. You get to see the flow. How things flowing, how things are being presented to you. How what you need comes to you effortlessly. You're not really trying to make it happen. It will just come to you. So everything starts to flow. You become the flow of life. And you got to be patient. But it's happening. You're on the right track. So our time is coming to the end. It's definitely been a pleasure being with you. Thank you for coming on this platform, whether it's been Zoom, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All of these videos are going to go on my YouTube channel as well as on our website. We're putting them on our website. The videos also, uh, the one that we recorded, uh, they automatically go on Facebook. We have them on Instagram and IGTV. And those of you who have registered through the Zoom, uh, we will email you a copy of this video after Amir has um, cleaned it up. And um, very soon after this project is over, we have a few free meditation, guided meditations that we're gonna be sending it to you weekly. Um, our next event is
is my academy, which happens every Wednesday. And it's a free online uh, academy that I offer every week. You're welcome to join me. We can meet up on Wednesday. And that's going to be from 10 a.m. To, to 11.45 Pacific Standard Time. I have two events coming. One is the Shamanic Healing Circle, and that's going to be on July 23rd. It's a two-hour event. You're welcome to register. Uh, it will be a Shamanic Healing. And then followed by a weekend workshop, which is the Ascension to Fifth Dimension workshop. It's a brand new workshop. It's the first time I'm offering it. And then the goal of this workshop is to give you the tools and the techniques of how you can raise your vibrations to a higher frequency and tap into this place very quickly diving into the deep silence by activating the grid within yourself. So there would be active meditations and guidance. And of course, we talk with each other. We have limited this workshop to 30 people so we can interact with, with each other. So go ahead and jump in if you feel, if you feel compelled to be a part of it. Uh, go ahead and register as soon as you can. I also, uh, this year, for the first year, because of my schedule, that I have enough time, I have created a uh, training program. It's called Life Training Program. It's a VIP, uh, tailor-made program for one-on-one -on -one training. It's a four-month program. We meet once a week for one and a half hour. Uh, the session could be recorded if you wish. And I, it's a tailor-made program. That means I design a specific program for your needs. And whatever blockages you have, wherever you're stuck, uh, we're going to address that. And we're gonna, I'm going to help you to get over the hump. And... Uh, I started it about four months ago. So two of my participants are about to finish their program. So I have space for two more people. I have to say uh, we had 100% positive um, uh, results. It's been successful, extremely successful. So um, if you are compelled to invest in yourself, it is a lifetime investment that you make and you want to have me to help you and to design a specific training program for you to reach your goal, uh, feel free to contact me and we will have a consultation. It's a free uh, half an hour consultation we'll have with each other and, and then we'll go through everything together and then I will tell you what it, entails how much time you need to put into it and uh, what to be expected and we'll go on from there uh, you can contact me on my uh, email it's info at zaratustra.tv info at zaratustra.tv you can find our email on our website which is zaratustra.tv or write to me on uh, one of our, I prefer if you email it to me because um, messages on Facebook, sometimes they get lost and we don't get to see it. So. Looking forward to our next encounter. It was definitely a wonderful time. I loved it. Really enjoyed every session we had together. And it's beautiful because it makes me realize how much I love doing what I'm doing. 
So it's never a chore. It's always a pleasure. Of course, there's the human body and sometimes the body is sick, sometimes it's tired, sometimes it's got its moods. And I never measure what I do based on what my body feels. So I find myself very lucky, very blessed that the presence has given me this opportunity to be in this position of serving. I always reminds me of a tarot card that I picked up. It says, I serve by ruling and I rule by serving. So I have a good employer. Her name is the majesty, the supreme soul, and she takes care of me. I encourage you to find this employer and get employed by her. And all your needs are taken care of. There's many, many other things that I wanted to talk about, but there's so much time to get into things. We will be doing this again. And uh, we'll continue doing the uh, Academy, which is every Wednesday I'm broadcasting. I've been doing it for four years and I'm gonna continue doing that. So we're connected, we're together and feel free to join me this coming Wednesday. Remember your power. Remember that you come from the land of love. Love is your true nature. But not talking about romantic love, not talking about superficial love, not talking about manufactured love. That you may tell yourself, oh, I need to be loving and blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about the recognition of this space and diving into it and really feeling it. And as you dive into it, the power reveals itself. A force field is automatically created. The force field of love. The presence protects you. God itself reveals itself to you. And you're 100% protected. Nothing will, no harm will come to you because you discovered the presence inside you. No force in universe can ever harm you. When you discover God inside yourself, when you feel it, you dive into it and you're living it, then you realize the power, which is not personal. Remember that and stay in this place. I love you very much and have a nice Sunday. Namaste.